Yeah, when you see people, you know, yeah. you try to be cordial. Come over here a little bit because I still want to see if you can't get part of that. So I'm not hiding the sign. I'm just it no, says honk, so I'm yeah, trying to it's get good. honk. <laughs> no, so. Oh, you're smelling you're, you're smelling the uh, incinerator. That's oh, yeah. that's a grill smell, but it's not really a grill smell. No, it's it's not a grill. It's flesh. It smells like flesh. It's not it's not the best smell in the world. There's not a lot of smoke. You know. When you smell the smell and you don't see smoke, that dogs are burning. It just it is what it is. There's not a lot of smoke involved with it, and it's not a very pleasant smell. No, there isn't. It isn't a, a very pleasant smell. It it starts out like a moment, like it's like it's oh grill. Oh, there's no grilling around here. Nobody's actually running a grill right here. Yeah, not right. Not at this time. Most people around this neighborhood are still just now waking up, and it is what it is. But that's. That's that smell. It's the original. It's what meat smells like when it's cooking on a barbecue. You're right. And then you realize exactly. It's there not was barbecue. extra chemicals. It smells like like when you um, you know they're running at such a high temperature probably because they have to to get it all so smokeless that um, it smells like when you burn off everything. You know when you do a, a su super cleaning on your oven. You oh. know when you do that over like where it just absolutely incinerates everything. Yeah. Now here's the one thing I was seeing, so like in the shadows coming off the building where the stack for the incinerator is, if you look at the shadowing you can actually see the heat signature came off. So I was just filming and I really wasn't seeing anything like I was when I was flying the drone right then. It seemed like, well I'm not really seeing a whole lot, but man I'm smelling, I'm smelling it. And then I saw the... Like the heat signature? Yeah, like yeah. when you see it through yeah. the sun, it'll come through there, and it was just making yeah, you the shadows see shadow. on the cement. Right. And so I knew they were, but that's what that is, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that thing usually, there wasn't a day except for the days that we're here for only four hours that the incinerator is not going. Now, it's not always for euthanasia. Sometimes it's, you know, private cremations, but for the mo most part, it's dogs that have been put down. That was have been put in owner requests. And that's what's going on back there. The incinerator is basically always running from eight to four, and then it stays on for an additional hour after we leave. This is actually the first time that we've been out here filming this that it's been that pungent that I'm smelling it. And I know it's blowing right across that smokestack right down on us, so maybe that's it. That and the air is a little heavier because you know there's some moisture in the air because the rain's coming, so. That's that's always a bonus for smells, unfortunately. It keeps it all down. And the air is coming from a certain direction today that also helps keep the smoke down. Our objective is to get new leadership in with new ideas that's willing to work with, work with outside agencies, rescues, to help save some of these dogs. We know we can't save all of them, but we can damn sure save some of them. I was just having a nice conversation with Anne Marie, who works with these people on a daily basis, she agrees. We need to do more to help these animals. We also have to find responsible owners because that's the problem we're having now. Irresponsible owners have led to this situation. No. I, um, on December 12, 2014, I died twice, three minutes. I got shocked back to life, performed CPR on, broke my back in the process. I worked here with a fractured spine. That's how dedicated I was to these animals. You never, and, and just so you can see, this is this is serious. This isn't a fucking joke. I literally died. They had to give me CPR to give me a beat so they could shock me. Okay, so that's how dead I was. This place, these animals saved my life. And I'm going to be here saving theirs until I can't or until them people are gone. And we get some responsible people. Two things you need to know: you need to be you need to be good with animals, and you need to know the difference between right and wrong. If you know those two things, good things can happen coming out of this building. So this is not the place to drop off. I found her. That's why I just didn't want her. They told us. They told us it was a kid. Okay, never mind. Um, oh, all, she's she's skittish. Where she's, are you? Where do you live? Macamoros. Were you? Mac she was a she was a bait dog. She's scared of everybody. Oh, oh, 
Thank you. Look at how beautiful you are. She is. She's she's she's, she's scared of guy. males. Talk to the guy with the white hat. He's from Detroit like, Pit Crew. Hey, baby. Hi. When did you find her? Yeah, about a week and a half ago. We tried we tried getting her acclimated, hey, but she's she's scared it's of our male. She because we have a mastiff yeah. and she's just petrified. She won't make it past today. Then she's not going. Okay. No, 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 no. Did you go try? We tried. We tried dog. We tried um, we, every every one of them. All right, let me talk to him. Tell him your story. Yeah, she's scared of she's scared of males. You're so pretty. Okay. I, I wasn't sure. Girl, look at you. You're so perfect. What's your name? Dave. I did. So it sounds like you're kind of in a conundrum. Yeah, but I mean, if we have to keep her a couple more weeks till we find something else, that's what we'll do. Okay, what are acceptable options? What, what? As long as she's going to a good home. That, somewhere where she's going to be taken care of. She, she has aggressive tendencies toward other people. She's she's hyper afraid of males. Um, it took a week for her to get like this with me. She's still skittish. Um, where, did you, where did you come from by this dog? Uh, Balduck Park. Balduck, uh, by... Uh, founder? Yeah. Oh, by St. John Hospital. Yeah. And then, then you see, then you, if you can see, yeah. you see her neck, you yeah, can see. Now, you're here at Michigan Anti-Cruelty Society. Why are you not taking her? I mean, if it's a kill shelter. I thought it was a non-kill shelter, so I, you know. That's okay. a, For this thing. For this thing. I didn't, yeah. I, it was advertised as a non-kill shelter, so I was like. She would be dead the second so you're, you're you are So you're just now her. getting familiar with this place and kind of understand. Are yeah. you familiar with no kill? And oh, no yeah, kill yeah, killing? absolutely. Yeah, it's... Child. She okay. she's too gentle to be to be killed just because of her breed. Here, Here sweetie, look. So See? so this now has become unacceptable. Oh, absolutely, you. absolutely. She'll go home with me before she goes in there. Thank you. No problem. Some people don't see my life. No. Yeah, no. I've had her a week, so you you grow attached. So what were you seeing right here? What's wrong with you? Uh, oh, it's a scab. Yeah, it's a scab. Sweetie, I won't upset you. I'll turn this around, okay? <laughs> you just got a scab either. You're not going there. Yeah, we have a we have a mastiff, and he's he's just been trying to just just going out of his way to just display dominance. We bought a cage for her and everything, so you know. So is she doing anything? Is she gonna do anything? No. Are you ready to go home? You ready to go home? Thank you. Oh, no, that's okay. Thank you for sharing your story she's as well. A, she's a beautiful girl. She is. The other dogs are scaring her. 